Notice in today's Gospel reading when our Lord is made aware of these Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices, in other words, they were killed, as well as those upon whom this tower fell, in other words, it was an accident. And our Lord asked the questions, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? And he says, no. I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. But there's two important messages here. One of them is that when something bad happens to someone, it doesn't mean that it's because they were bad. In other words, it could just be an accident, you know, just like this tower falling on certain people. But our Lord does indicate that if we are bad, if we do not repent of our sins, bad things will happen to us. So just because bad things happen, it doesn't mean you're bad. It could be an accident. It could be nature taking its course. But if you are bad, bad things will happen to you. And in fact, when he goes on, he goes on with this parable about the fig tree that doesn't bear fruit. And the, the owner wants to cut it down. And, of course, the, the servant says, no, you know, wait, wait one more year. Let me dig around it. Let me put some manure on it. Let me, let me take care of it. So, in other words, cutting down, this cutting down, right? How are we to apply this parable to our own life? Well, of course, God wants us to bear good fruit. We know that. And we should be bearing good fruit. You see, in today's gospel reading, one aspect is the need for repentance, and it's very important. You see, sin is the obstacle to our union with God. Sin is the obstacle to our happiness here in this world. Sin is the obstacle to our healthy relationships with the people around us. So we need to root sin out of our lives. But just because we stop sinning, it doesn't mean the way that we are the way that we should be. In other words, we still need to bear fruit. You know, charity, kindness, generosity, all these things. Patience, understanding, forgiveness, all these good fruits, but also and especially love of God, worship of God, obedience to God. So not just repenting of our sins, yes, that's necessary, that's essential, but also bearing good fruit. And as our Lord points out, if you're not bearing good fruit, you will be cut down. You will not be able to continue to do anything. Now, when our Lord addressed these to the Jewish people, um, you know, they were talking about the Galileans, but, you know, when we think of some of the Jewish people in Jerusalem, they were cut down. Why? Because they did not repent of their sins. They did not accept our Lord. They did not bear the fruit that God was expecting of them. And so Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. Historians say that over a million Jews were killed when Jerusalem was attacked by the Romans. So they were cut down. They were cut down. Now, the, the same thing could happen to us. And in fact, we've had various warnings that this may indeed very well happen to us, not, not so much as the church or not only as the church, but as people in general. I mean, think of the apparition of Our Lady of Fatima and she made the statement that unless people stop offending God, in other words, unless they repent of their sins and turn to God and bear good fruit, so unless people stop offending God, there will be another worse war to punish mankind. And she even predicted when that would happen. She predicted the, the reign of the Pope that would be reigning at that time. And sure enough, it happened. So in other words, God was using Our Lady of Fatima to warn people that if we do not repent, people will be cut down. God will chastise us. God will chastise the world. And you know, this prediction was made in 1917 and after World War II, people are far worse today. So in other words, what can we expect? So we have that warning from Fatima, and in fact, even the Divine Mercy apparitions, we have that warning 
through our sister Faustina Kowalska. And, you know, today we celebrate the feast of Pope John Paul II. And he was the, um, the bishop that was um, in charge of investigating the apparitions of our Lord to St. Faustina Kowalska. And he approved those, those apparitions. And as we know, the, the part of the message is, Jesus, I trust in you and focus on the mercy of God. But what's, what's also interesting and very, very noteworthy and what a lot of people tend to forget is how Sister Faustina received the prayers for the Divine Mercy Chaplet. So she had this vision of the avenging angel coming to punish mankind. And she didn't want to see mankind suffering in this way. And so she prayed to God, you know, withhold this, this avenging angel. But no prayer, she said, could, could accomplish what she was hoping for. And so God revealed to her these prayers of the divine mercy, which in reality is, is what, what the Mass is all about. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. In other words, the need for reparation. Every time we celebrate Mass, we are drawing down God's grace on the entire world. In many ways, we are making reparation, yes. But getting back to that vision, in other words, the avenging angel was coming. And she had these apparitions, I think, in the 1930s. 1920s, or I think it was the 1930s, yeah. So, so in other words, God was using this vision of St. Faustina Kowalska to warn us that we are, the avenging angel is going to come unless, unless we turn and repent. And... You know, there's been many other apparitions who are all warning the same kinds of things, but people don't take heed. You know, another one that's been approved is Our Lady of Akita in Japan. And, and very similar to, to Fatima, but it also talks about all kinds of catastrophes. You know, the stars falling from the heavens and, and, and wiping out nations. You know, it could be a reference to nuclear war. So this is very serious. And it's good for us to be aware of this. So yes, there's many good things in, in this life, um, but we also need to repent of our own sins. And the reality is that we are all sinners, but there's so many people out there who are committing mortal sin, who are far from God, and are headed in the wrong direction. In other words, they're headed towards hell, but there's no one to help them. You know, this, this imagery of the of, of the, um, the fig tree, right? And, and the, the, the owner of the vineyard comes looking for fruit, finds none. And so he says to the, to the servant or to the gardener, you know, cut it down. So the gardener says, let alone for a little bit more while, a little longer, and I'll dig around it and put manure. Well, you see, it's almost as if God, by sending Our Lady, or maybe Our Lady was saying, you know, wait, God, wait with your uh, vengeance, wait with the chastisement. Let me appear in Fatima. I'll send my divine son to, to appear to St. Faustina Kowalska. Our Lady will appear in Akita. These are like the manure. This is like, okay, come on, guys, wake up, bear some fruit, pray, pray the rosary, repent of your sins, do penance. Convert others, you know, admonish the sinner. This is what, what's happening, right? So kind of like one more year, okay, well, how long do we have? Maybe our time is up, but we still need to try to do what we can to try to save souls. And we need to be ready for, for the worst also. And, you know, if, we, if you're reading the news and if you're reading between the lines, you know that things don't look good. You know, gas prices are going up, threat of war, threat of economic collapse. Uh, if the gas prices are going up, the price of food, everything, the price of everything is going to go up. People have lost jobs. So many people have just lost jobs during the pandemic. So... And, and we see this push for totalitarian regimes to, to control people. The World Economic Forum, you know, talking about the Great Reset. And in order to have a Great Reset, you have to have Great Collapse. And to rebuild from that, to reset everything. And they want to have, you know, total control of everyone. They want to 
model societies on what's happening in China, where they have the, uh, the uh, digital um, the system, you know, the social credit system, because that way they can control everyone. And that's what people in power want to do. Complete and absolute control over all its citizens. There's advantages to that, provided you're a good Christian ruler, but most rulers are not. Even though they might be baptized as Christians, they're, they're full of pride and they're just full of this desire to have greater and greater power and greater and greater control over people. And what tends to happen is religion is suppressed, as we see in all these totalitarian regimes. So this is what's coming. And we've had plenty of warning. And it's up to us to act because we are the ones who know what's happening. No one else is going to act. We are the only ones who have the ability to change things or at least to save some souls, provided we make the effort. So let us bear fruit, uh, not just in ourselves, but in the people around us by by our efforts to evangelize, by our efforts to spread the kingdom of God here on earth. Just a reminder, today we have our uh, Catholic Women's League Fall Bazaar taking place in our parking lot. It's a wonderful day for it. I think the temperature is going to be uh, quite high today, 18 to 20 degrees. And uh, the bazaar will be open from 9.30 to 3 p.m. They're going to have all kinds of good things there. And just a reminder, this evening after our 5 p.m. Mass, we have our movie night, which will be an in-person event in our parish hall. We are showing the movie, The Secret, Dare to Dream. Uh, the movie is free. Pizza, popcorn, and water will be available uh, for $5 for those who are interested. And even though you didn't sign up for the movie, you are welcome to come.